Every action has an equal and opposite reaction. All space rockets work on this principle, blasting fuel in one direction to push it in the opposite. However, one NASA engineer believes he can get us to space without using any propellant. NASA is developing a near light speed engine that defies physics, a concept for an engine that can accelerate to 99% the speed of light without the need for propellant. That may seem like something from a science fiction film, but it isn't. This is precisely what one of NASA's engineers is working on. What methods will be used to create these engines? What will it run on if it doesn't need fuel? Most importantly, will a person be able to ride in a vehicle with a thruster like this? In a split second, we'll find out. Humans drive to travel everywhere and want to know everything about space. Even if we traveled at the fastest possible speed, it would take us years to reach our nearest star. Another human desire is to find a solution to this significant problem. NASA engineer David Burns has precisely been doing that in his spare time, as he claims to have designed an engine that can accelerate to 99% of the speed of light without the need for propellant. He's named it the Helical Engine and published it on NASA's Technical Reports server. On paper, it works by exploiting how mass can change at relativistic speeds close to the speed of light in a vacuum. It has not yet been evaluated by a professional. This story created curiosity in the early days of the EM drive, which is understandable. And yes, it is possible that this engine could break some laws of physics. The EM drive was NASA's initial step into the notion of trying to develop a faster than light engine. So let's understand what the EM drive is. The EM drive is a radio frequency resonant cavity thruster concept that Roger Scheuer first developed in 2001. A British chartered electrical engineer with 48 years of experience in the space and defense industries. Internally reflecting microwaves are said to create thrust, violating the law of conservation of momentum and other fundamental observations. This device has been called the impossible drive by the media. Explanations for how the EM drive might work go beyond what is known about physics. Perhaps it's interacting with the vacuum energy of space quantum time, even though the vacuum energy of space quantum time doesn't allow anything to push off it. Perhaps our perception of progress has been destroyed, as the EM drive experiments have proven it could be brand new physics. There is no approved design for this device, and no one who claims to have designed it has committed to defining how it would work as a thruster or what components make it up. In 2016, NASA's Advanced Propulsion Physics Laboratory reported seeing a modest apparent thrust from one of these tests, a finding that has yet to be confirmed. According to a subsequent research, the force recorded was later shown to be a measuring mistake produced by interactions with the magnetic field on Earth or heat gradients. Scientists from the Technical University of Dresden released three articles in March 2021 claiming that the push was a complete fluke and that external influences caused it. While the helical engine is enjoyable, despite its promises, it is unlikely to defy the laws of physics anytime soon. Burns feels his proposal is worth pursuing even though it has been regarded with suspicion from certain places. He says, I'm comfortable with throwing anything out there. I'll be the first to acknowledge if it doesn't work. It was worth a go, he adds. What exactly was meant when he said it would work? Well, as a thinking exercise, Burns depicts a box with a weight inside, hung on a line and springs at either end, bouncing the weight back and forth. This would shake the entire box in a vacuum with the importance of remaining static. The box would squirm in the same place overall. However, if the weight's mass grew only in one direction, it would provide more significant push in that direction, resulting in thrust. What are our thoughts on the matter? We believe this is not conceivable according to the notion of momentum conservation, which asserts that a system's momentum remains constant without any external forces. According to Einstein's special relativity theory, objects acquire mass as they approach the speed of light, an effect that must be considered in particle accelerators. A simple version of Burns's notion would replace the ring with a circular particle accelerator, 
where ions are rapidly accelerated to relativistic speed during one stroke and decelerated during the other. On the other hand, Burns believes it would be more practical to forego the box and rod and instead use the particle accelerator for both lateral and circular motion, in which case the accelerator would need to be fashioned like a helix. However, there is one relativity issue in particular. As per special relativity, an object gains mass as they approach the speed of light. If we replace the weight with ions and the box is replaced with a loop, the ions may flow faster at one end and slower on the other. On the other hand, Burns's drive isn't a single closed loop. It's termed a helical engine because it's helical like a stretched out spring. The engine accelerates ions enclosed in a circle to relativistic speeds before varying their velocity to modify their mass slightly. The engine then moves ions back and forth along the direction of travel to produce thrust, he wrote. He further added, the engine has no moving parts other than ions traveling in a vacuum line trapped inside electric and magnetic fields. According to scientists, the helical chamber would have to be rather large. To be precise, it is 200 meters long, or about 656 feet, and about 12 meters in diameter, or roughly 40 feet. To create one newton of thrust, 165 megawatts of energy would be required. That is the amount of force needed to accelerate a kilogram of mass per second square which is similar to the output of a power plant. However, proposals for propulsion-free vehicles, such as the helical engine, are not entirely new. In the late 1970s, a US inventor named Robert Cook invented an engine that reportedly converted centrifugal energy into linear motion. Then, in the early 2000s, a British inventor named Roger Scheuer proposed the EM drive, suggesting that trapped microwaves could be transformed into thrust. Neither idea has been proven, and both are widely believed to be impossible due to a violation of a fundamental physical law, the conservation of momentum. Physicists at the Technical University of Dresden, who tested the EM drive, say that the helical engine can suffer from the same issue. To my knowledge, no inertial propulsion system has ever functioned in a friction-free environment, one of them claims. Unlike the others, this machine uses special relativity, which confuses the image, he explains. But unfortunately, there is always action-reaction. Burns has been working on his proposal in secret, without NASA's approval, as he agrees it is wasteful. He believes, however, that the majority of the energy lost by the accelerator through heat and radiation can be captured. He also proposes methods for preserving momentum, such as the spin of propelled ions. I know that it risks being right up there with the EM drive and cold fusion, he says, but you have to be prepared to be embarrassed. It's quite tough to come up with something completely unique that also works. As you can see, science is still in the early stages. This is most likely where we inform you that your skepticism is well-founded, but don't be fooled. We shouldn't be astonished if a faster-than-light capable engine appears in the future given the rate at which aeronautical technology advances. However, once that occurs, all of our science fiction dreams will be on a fast course to becoming science truth. So, that concludes today's video. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.